Hello again. This is Senator Harriet Chandler of the 1st Worcester District, and this is Beacon Hill Chat, the show that brings you interesting people talking about some of the interesting things that are going on here in the greater Worcester area. And today, like all the other shows, we have a very interesting guest. His name is Mike Shalev. He's the co-owner with his partner, uh, Ben Herligan, Herliger, uh, and the executive director of Oasis at Dodge Park. Welcome. We're so delighted to have you. Thank you. My pleasure to be here today. Well, we, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about Dodge Park, and we're going to talk about Oasis, which doesn't exist yet, but is on its way. The ground was broken uh, the middle of, of, of October, and when do you think it's going to be completed? Well, our, our hope is will be ready around October, November of 2015. Of next, next year. 15. All right, we'll talk about that in yeah. just a moment. But let's talk about you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, believe it or not, I'm by in education, I'm electrical engineer. Electrical engineer. Uh, electrical running engineer. A home. Uh, turning a into a, 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 to any other nursing home dealing with dementia. And uh, I, I came here to this country many years ago from Israel, and uh, I find out after a year that. Electrical engineer is not in my future. And I was looking into to do something else different to work with people. And this is how I came involved with, um, at this time it was in the early stage, caring for individuals diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And I really fell in love, the ability to help in people to create a life, to create a better life for people. So people don't really be scared of the disease, as long as they know they have tool and the ability and the environment to care for them. So you came here originally by buying Dodge Park with your partner. That's correct. And uh, Dodge Park that you bought wasn't quite what you have made it into. Is that That's correct. Part, Dodge Park correct? was having a wonderful reputation. Right. That was one of the reasons we decided to buy it, but it wasn't something that was in our passion. We saw the potential to convert uh, Dodge Park to the same thing Ben and I were doing in uh, Los Angeles for over 21 years. Because prior to buying Dodge Park, we had seven different facilities in Los Angeles. And that's what we did. We specialized in caring for people with dementia, Alzheimer's disease, in what we call residential care setting. And when we bought Dodge Park, they do have one and off. They do have few people with dementia. They have some few people using a walker. But it was a kind of hybrid. They try to care for every single item. They have some young population. They have an elderly population. And we try to focused on what we love to do, and that's what we're doing for so many years. So let's talk for the average vo average viewer who really isn't familiar with some of these terms. There is a difference between a nursing home and a rest home, and Dodge Park is a rest home. That's correct. So let's talk about the difference. Well, when do you go to a rest home? When do you go to a nursing home? There and is, uh, what is the difference? There is right now for the average consumer, they have a couple options right now in the Commonwealth. They can go to an assisted living, they can go to a rest home, and they can go to a nursing home. Rest home, by definition, is considered nursing home level four, where the traditional nursing home is, level, is nursing home level two. The big advantage for the consumer that is a rest home we regulate by the Department of Public Health, so we held to a lot of higher standard than most of the assisted living. Uh, what's the difference between a rest home and a nursing home? Is in a rest home, we don't really provide an extensive nursing care like you get in a nursing home. If you need a feeding tube, a truck, or any extensive nursing care, we are not the place, the, for, the, the place for those residents. What we do in the Dutch part primarily, we care for individuals uh, that have dementia, memory, or Alzheimer, but they can still benefit from our activity program, extensive activity program. Mm -hmm. uh, I get an email from you every week, yeah. and it's Friday is fun time. Friday funny. But, right, Friday fun, that's a great idea, so yeah. that you're making people who are in the rest home laugh. We send this right now in my circulation close to about 10,000 people. That's 
10,000 or on your Coast email? to coast, coast to coast. Those people that used to be our customer and people we know in the West Coast and people from our area. Right now in our area, we have about close to 4,500 people and about 5,500 still from the West Coast. Oh my goodness. Now what happened to your, your places on the West Coast? We, um, we never planned to sell. One day someone came and gave us an offer and want to buy us out. And you and, couldn't say no. And I put it this way, we could say no, but I wanted to run out of California. Really? I really want to run out of California for a long time. When I first came from uh, Israel, I came to this area and I loved the neighborhood. Everybody told us that we are crazy. We live in the West Coast to come into the East Coast. Yeah. Usually people doing the opposite right. move. But I love the weather, I love the fourth season, and uh, I like the people in this state. So you were, were you looking to buy a, a, a nursing home, a rest home, a sister, were you looking to buy something when you saw uh, the Yes, I mean, when, when, once we get an offer to uh, sell our facility, uh, we had to do what you call a, a tax exchange, which is a 1031. And we get each amount of time to identify, and we focus mainly on Boston area and Rhode Island, uh, New Hampshire and Maine. It was funny because at the same time we bought Dodge Park, we almost bought another place in New Hampshire. Really? Uh, which we love a lot, but we realized that as a newcomer to the area, it's going to be very, very difficult to manage two different facilities in two different states. And I'm thank God that I never, I never really went into this and I decided to stick only with one building. That's, that was probably very wise of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, there was there's much op effort and, and much opportunity for growth here with rest homes because we have not done very much with rest homes. And, and you know, I fully agree, and I think rest home is really, really underutilized in the state. Let's talk about the, the financial difference because I think people who watch this want to know how much would it cost to, to, if I were to go into a rest home versus how much would it cost if I go to a nursing home? That's correct. Uh, the average cost of the uh, nursing home in the state per day is close to above $400 a day. $400 a day for a, day. a nursing for home. For a nursing home. And, and a the rest home, they vary based on the level and places like that provide specialized care is usually about a half or 40 percent less than what the nursing home cost is. Which makes a huge difference. Which makes make it a huge difference. It's cheapest to the state, plus also provide the consumer a feeling of a home-like environment. Does Mass Health, but not Mass Health, M M Medicaid? Medicaid, Medicaid does not cover really uh, any rest of care, care. There is a special program in the state of Massachusetts called Emergency Aid for Elder and Disabled Children under the Department of Transitional Assistance that do cover rest home. It's kind of similar to the mass health program in, uh, in a nursing home. Uh, the only difference is they're running by a different agency and they have some slightly different requirement and uh, qualification. So but the big difference, the big difference that if somebody in a nursing home go to uh, a hospital, then usually where we have a 10 day bed hold, right, right. and sometimes people might lose uh, the bed. Right. In a rest home, by law, we, can, we are not providing people with a 10 day bed hold. So, so if people go if, immediately, can't No, you? if people go to a hospital or rehab, they can go 30, 60 days, we can still keep the bed for them. But they, somebody has to pay for it. The state are paying for this. The state for even for people who aren't children? Yes, is, I'm not sure about the children program. I'm talking about the elderly part of this. The elderly but part if does. I have a resident of mine that, God forbid, and walk, fell, broke the shoulder or the hip, has to go to a rehab, and the rehab takes 30, 60 days, then his bed is it's secure held. in my facility. The state will pay us to maintain the bed, to but keep the bed. even though the state does not pay for the person normally who is there, is that correct? I'm not sure. I, I, I'm, I'm confused because you said that the state does not pay for somebody in a nurse in, in, in a rest home. In a, in, no, the state will continue to pay the facility. No, before before they ever get in, into a hospital. Uh, obviously, if they go to the hospital, yes, it helps. Mm -hmm. But when they're there, before they fall, before they've hurt themselves, 
Uh, aren't they paying privately? People pay privately or the state will pay because like in a Dutch part, for example, we not allow people out of the, to the street when the personal fund depleted. We allow them to stay in our facility and then the state will pay for the stay in our facility. All right, so when they run out of money yes. as a private pay, then the state picks That's up? That's correct. So that you can, they can stay there? They can stay. And we have some people in our building for about over 10 years. Really? Under the state program. And this is kind of an advantage to the community and a kind of service that Ben and myself always felt is right to do, that when people run out of money, that the family know they have a peace of mind, that they have a still a place to stay, and they don't have to move. And this is something that is become a big issue among the assisted living community. Many of them, when the personal fund is depleted or disappear, many of them- still, They can still stay. They, they ask to, to leave, most of the assisted living. They, but the state won't pay for assisted living? I'm not sure, I, I'm not familiar okay. with the assisted living program, so I can't really okay. tell. I, uh, uh, but I know, I know for far that many places not allow them to stay once the personal fund is depleted. I see. So you, you've owned Dodge Park for how long? Since 2007, early 2007. So seven years. And seven years is a biblical number. You know, it's, I'm amazed. You know, it looked like it was happening yesterday. Yes, yes. Uh, and when did you start thinking about doing something specific for people who have dementia, people who have uh, memory loss? When did that, did you come here thinking you were going to do this? sort of special facility? Well, I, I, this was our mind, you know, this is what we left behind. For your question, when I came across when I want to do it, I say it was close to about 30 years ago when I first opened my first facility. And I find out that we really have a passion for this in a way that, and I can tell you this story. We had a lady that, very young lady, she was diagnosed with uh, uh, early st onset stage of Alzheimer's disease. She moved to our facility uh, from a nursing home back in California. She was, I would say, early 50, I believe. Very young, with a wonderful family, very supportive. And she came to us in a wheelchair. And I, we tried to walk her, we have a physical therapy work with her. And she kind of refused, you know, because of the dementia sometimes, they don't like to cooperate. Yeah. And I remember myself going one day with one of my nurses and my CNA, we start talking with her in a nice one and one and one. And I asked her, will you mind to walk with me? And all of a sudden she said yes. And I take her out of the wheelchair and I walk with her around the facility. She and could is, walk. And she was walking, you know, she was have the ability to walk, but she wasn't stable. And nobody was able to get her walking, you know, not even the, the children or the husband. And she would jump out of the chair and walk with me. And since then, I'm the only person she was willing to work with. And you know, by the end of the day, when you go home and you're doing this kind of thing, you feel good about yourself. You, you feel, make a difference in somebody's I, life. I make a difference in somebody's life, and I make a difference in not only for the resident, but also for the loved one. Because those people diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, the family grew into a terrible time. Many of them really have a hard time to crop in with the children, spouses, uh, uh, family member, brother, sister. Many of them really, they, sometimes this disease can turn apart the whole family. And when they go to Dodge Park, they're safe, they're well cared for, the family can, can rest. Uh, peacefully knowing that that you know true. you're absolutely right and this is all our intention to create a true home away from home so you, you you've been doing this for seven years and for three or four or five I don't know how long you've been planning this new very specialized part of Dodge Park how long has it been Mike has it been uh, did you come here with this idea that you were going to do something no, I, I, when, I, when, I, when we first look, and we're looking into a place that we can really take our experience from the West Coast and uh, translate into something in this local market, because this is our passion. My passion is not to run an assisted living or independent living or even a nursing home. This is not my passion. My passion is really to create somebody that with dementia, they still have some mobility issue, and that is people get them up, get them involved in social life, take them outside to a show, take them out to a local restaurant, to get them into part of the community, because Alzheimer's is not a contagious disease. No. We don't need to 
isolate them. We don't need to segregate them into a special unit. They need to be part of the overall community. But all too often, people with Alzheimer's goes to a nursing home and not a rest home. Can you explain why that is? Uh, I would say a lot of this has to do with the way with our system right now in, in Massachusetts. Okay. I think our system is really pushing people into a nursing home where they should get another opportunity in, in a home setting. Uh, it's because of regulation, uh, it's because of financial need, because many of the people are in mass health and this is really the only option for them to go into a nursing home that do accept mass health. But even those nursing homes are really limited. Most of the nursing homes right, right now will not take everybody. They that, don't specialize uh, in, in Either in way, they don't specialize or from the economic value. They no. will not admit them. And they just tell the consumer to apply, and they will let them know when the bed's coming up. Yeah. So it's going to become a challenge to provide a true spirit dementia program. It involves a lot. It involves an interdepartment collaboration between the nursing department, the activity department, admission office, and housekeeping. All, all need to work as a one unit, and all need to be extremely trained how to deal with this population. And I, I didn't bring one, but I, you have written a book about Alzheimer's and dementia, and uh, you, you are an expert in this area, and you will continue to run Dodge Park on Randolph? On Randolph Road, Randolph 101 Road. Randolph Road. And maybe you ought to give us your telephone number and you have a website as well? Sure, I mean the website for Dodge Park is www.dodgepark.com and the phone number for Dodge Park is 508-853-8180 and either way myself or Ben, we always willing to meet with everyone seven days a week. We can. We help so many people in the community that either we don't have the resource to come to Dodge Park or have faced a crisis. We came and meet with them. We screen them out in the hospital. We give them free advice. And we will and continue doing this because we are part of the community. But in addition to doing that, you are now doing something else across the street because you, for years, have been across the street from the old... What? The old Dodd Fellow the building. Yes, you're absolutely Dodd right. Fellow you know, building. we, um, when we bought Dodge Park, we all had in mind about this site across the street. And it's been closed. It, it's been in... It's been closed for over 30 years, and we run through a lot of uh, challenges, as you're aware, to get in the approval to take this historical building down, which we fully understand the community concern about taking down an historical building but this building was beyond repair. Even before us, the uh, original old fellow, they sold the building to a local church. They sold it to a local developer. And this developer was in escrow with two different organizations that want to do something. And they all back out because of the magnitude of the investment required to deal. So we eventually, we bought the building and we get the permission to take it down. And now we had yesterday the ground break into the oasis at Dodge Park. And for those people that want to find out more information, they can visit the website that is already up and running. is www.oasis at dodgepark.com. And we're very proud. It's going to be a really unique state-of-the-art residential care facility for the elderly. Uh, we're going to serve their 82. But it's not just for the elderly. It is for specifically. That's correct. People who have memory loss, people who have dementia, people who have Alzheimer's. That's so correct. So if you have a loved one that fits this, this, this definition, who doesn't have any large health needs, physical health needs, other than the, 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 the uh, diagnosis of, of dementia or Alzheimer's, and you want a, 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 a loving community family setting, that, that's a, a good way of putting it, a family you know, setting. You're absolutely right. When I mean residential care for the elderly, this is by the, the title or the definition under the Department of Public Health. But if you have uh, a loved one suffer from Alzheimer or dementia, and they are mid early 50, and their need are the same need that we provide the resident, they will be a perfect candidate as well. So it's not age. I mean, there's no really Nothing mid, has to do with age exactly. here. It, it, it just has to do with what level of service we're right. going to provide 
to those individuals. And I think, to me, the big difference was if a nursing home is the appropriate setting, if there are other conditions, physical conditions, in addition to the dementia and, or memory loss, but if they are strict, if they're healthy, basically, but with memory loss, and, and, and maybe I'm making this too simple, but uh, I, I, I think you have to understand why Oasis is an oasis in this area. It is, uh, it's trying to be unique on a couple level, but back to your question, again, our goal also is to try to have people not to move to a nursing home. That's one of the reasons when they get to the final stage of their life, we can activate the hospice care as well. So in most of the cases, most of our residents for the past seven years were able to end up their life in our building without move. But it's going to be a true, true oasis on a couple front. Number one, design and the concept of the care. I wish you had brought the, the, the I know, the, the I wish. You know, uh, uh, that's why I, I offer the site to the audience, yeah. so they're more than welcome to log in. We have all the floor plan. You have the, the, the plans yeah, there. Yeah, we have all the floor plan. Uh, we have... Oasis at Dodge Park. Oasis at DodgePark.com. And the whole idea when we designed the concept was to bring the outdoor indoor. We have a lot of area inside the building that full access to the daylight, to the true outdoor, which inside the building. And, we and go it's on, one story. It's all one story. And this is another thing that Ben and myself for so many years like. We like to, I mean, to create an environment that people will feel at home. And if you look around most of the large corporation, many of them build to two or three story building. And I'm sure if any large developer will put his hand on this side, that's what we'll do. It probably will be cheaper on many fronts, but when we design it, cost is important, but there was a secondary factor. We want to make sure that people can go to the backyard. We have a huge, about 10,000 square feet, completely secure outdoor. So in the nice weather, those people with dementia can grow out, they can sit down, like in the coffee shop outdoor. And they're safe. And they're safe. The family member can sit down with them. They can have a barbecue on the patio as well. We're going to have a lot of lunches there, a lot of dinner, a lot of entertainment on the patio. And this will make a huge difference because daylight and the feeling of freedom, that's what makes a difference between using more or less medication and dealing with this terrible disease. And our goal was always to minimize the number of medication we're going to use. And if you've been to Dodge Park recently, you will see that they're building also a secure area outside so that's that patients are able, residents, that's not correct. Patients, We call residents, them residents, right. Residents are able to go outside and perhaps have lunch outside, just sit and enjoy yep. the fresh air without being concerned about wandering into the street, but uh, without being, uh, wondering is a problem yep. here. Yeah, it's absolutely. We just finished it a couple of months ago. Uh, there was a couple of months in the, in planning and it's a beautiful, beautiful area. We were able to use it you know, now for the last two months just before the winter. And next year we're going to use it extensively. You know, we're planning every Wednesday night, barbecue dinner with entertainment on the patio so family can join. Oh, that's, that's uh, a wonderful we idea. We have every single weekend. We have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have a live show at Dodge Park and we're planning the Dodge show to be on the patio as well. So try to, to, to create more festivity to those people. And you know, we're taking a group, you know, the other day we, I was driving a group, uh, we went to Wild Willie for lunch too. Really? Oh yeah, we're going with them to Wild Willie. We go to a chicken farm in Rhode Island. Uh, we go to Boston Market. We go to music show at the Patachio, the music store so in Auburn. So able, you're, you get them out. And most of my residents, if they're going to move to a nursing home, they're not going, they, nobody will take them anywhere. And this is the huge difference of the quality of life, and that's what we're doing. So you're going to be up and running by October 2015. This was what my contractor promised us yesterday, the grand breaking. And that, that's important, yeah. that's very important. Uh, this is the culmination of many years now, not months or right. weeks, but many years of planning. Uh, this is about it, almost five years in the planning. Is there anything else like this in, in Massachusetts? I'm not sure. I'm, uh, there are some new facilities around us, uh, but most of them are either, either way in a nursing home 
or, rest, or, or on assisted living. I'm not aware about any such restaurant ever built in the state. And this and is it's one just of, for this purpose. Just for this purpose. You know, this is a restroom that will be specialized for clearing for people with uh, dementia and Alzheimer. But they, the, it's still private pay. It's going to be private pay, but when the fund is de depleted, they will allow to stay as well. All right. So because that, the state steps in at that And point. then the state will step in as well, too. Okay. And, you know, at the same time, you know, I really appreciate, you know, the Department of Public Health, you know, for their support. And, uh, well, talk, talk about that, about who you, you, you've given this, you, you've uh, given as a testimony to the Department of Public Health the woman who just passed away. It's, it's really right. in you know, her we, memory. Sin, since we came to Massachusetts, uh, we were really touched by two people at the department, Ray Klein, which was re already retired, and Miss Flinter, which she was the regional director. Ellen Flinter. Ellen Flinter. She was a true supporter of our program. She really realized what Ben and I bring into the table, and she functioned more of as a mentor to us. And just recently, she just passed away from a short illness. And we're going to dedicate our new building, the Oasis at Dodge Park, for Ellen uh, Flinter. And yesterday when we had our grand Berkeley, you know, we had her sister came and her husband. She was very touched. I mean, I was there. She was yeah, very touched. She's a wonder she was a wonderful spirit. She's a wonderful spirit. Her sister is also a wonderful spirit. She's also working in the health care as well. And uh, we couldn't say enough about her because she helped Ben and myself with all issue we had, any question we had in the state any clarification of the regulation that we need. But you know, it's not only Helen, we found the department in general very, very supportive. I know a lot of people, or business owner in our field, when they hear me talking about this, they probably the guy's crazy. But we already always found them as a true supporter of our program. From the director, uh, Sherman Loan, in um, the uh, planning department, uh, Daniel Gent, and all the people we worked in, the evaluator, the surveyor, we see them a partner to our, in, in the care. And this is, I think, the way they should be uh, viewed by uh, most of the uh, operators. It's good to hear such a positive spin here. Well, and it, it's good to hear the, the plans you have. We'll have to get you to come back as we get closer to I'll the 15th, be happy to. Uh, 2015. Uh, we're so delighted you were able to join us today. My pleasure. And we're delighted to know that the oasis at Dodge Park is on its way. And we're delighted that you were able to join us today to learn more about a very unusual thing that's happening here, a facility that is unique in our area. Uh, this is Senator Harriet Chandler saying goodbye for now. We'll see you again next year, next year, next week uh, on Beacon Hill Chat. Same time, same place. See you then. Take care. Have a good week.